Hey, Miami Vineyard, so good to see you. So good to have those of you joining us online today. Hey, can we make some noise and welcome in our online family? Come on, let's hear it for them. My name is Kevin. I'm one of the pastors, and normally I'd be bringing you a message right now, but today you're in for a very special treat. This weekend is what we're calling Youth Takeover Weekend. We are so excited... The youth are kind of over here. We are so excited what is happening in the lives of our youth here at our church that we want to give them an opportunity to share some of that with you this weekend. So the youth are, are serving in all kinds of different areas and capacities. In fact, the band you saw on stage today is entirely 100% youth band on stage today. Didn't they do a great job? So they're, in they're helping us with hospitality, production, all areas of the church today. So in just a moment, in just a moment, you're going to be hearing from our youth pastor, Pastor Isaac, who does a fantastic job. You're going to love Pastor Isaac. You're going to love him. He, he, he spoke last night, did a great job. You're going, to, you're going to love him. But before he comes, just a couple things. First, we'd love for you to locate our Miami Vineyard app, because in just a moment, Pastor Isaac is going to drop him. He's going to give you a couple of message notes. You might want to take a few things to fill in. So... If you haven't yet downloaded the app, just go to your app store, search Miami Vineyard. You can download the app. It's a free download. Or if you're in the room today, you can scan this QR code that's in the seat pocket in front of you. You can download our app, Miami Vineyard app. On the app is our church on your phone. Everything you need to know about us is on that app. So I'd love for you to download. the. the best. You can click on this weekend, click on message notes, and the message notes will pop right up there. So Pastor Isaac, you're going to love him. He's fun. He's got a great message today. And he's going to be on the stage in just a moment. But before he comes on the stage, I want to show you some of the youth highlights. Take a look at this. Come on, can we give Jesus some praise today? Come on, can we give Jesus some praise? This is youth takeover, but Jesus already overcome. Come on, somebody. Can you worship Jesus? He's here in this house. He's here in this room. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for being here today. Man, it's the honor of my life. I am, like Pastor Kevin mentioned, I am the youth and young adult pastor here in Miami Vineyard. Man, this is a youth takeover, but we got some of our young adult peace here serving as well. Come on, can we hear for the young adults still? My lovely wife is here too. I want to honor my wife. I couldn't be here without her. God has placed her in my life, and you've been just a blessing. You're my, the biggest blessing I have, my love. I love you, mommy. My parents are here somewhere, so I got to be careful what I say, but praise God. <laughs> hey, so... um. I want to get to know you, VFAM, a little bit more and, and get to interact. So I'm going to play this cool game with y'all, if y'all allow me to, all right? So I need everybody to pull out your phones, all right? Everyone pull out your phones, pull out your phones, all right? All right, it's, it's, this is a way for me to know you better and, and, and for you guys to know me a little bit more and my family. So once these guys are ready, they're going to put something on the screen here, and I'll give you guys... A few guidelines. Okay, this is Kahoo. So you could screen, you could scan this right here on the screen. If you have the Miami Vineyard app, guess what? You can go on the Miami Vineyard app. You can click on more, and you'll see where it says message game. If you need any help, 
can you raise your hand? And we have our volunteers here, our, our young adults and our students that will help you. If you need any help to get in, that, that's fine. If you could just raise your hand and we have our volunteers over there. We got, we need someone need help back there. All right. We got some, okay, cool, cool. They need help over here. They got it? All right, cool. Awesome, awesome. We just want, okay, okay, oh my God, just, everyone's popping in already. Look at this. This is beautiful. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. Man, I, I, can we give a huge shout out to the youth that were greedy? We have you right now on the production team, running cameras, running pro presenter. Man, what a great, what a great time to be here. Man, and, I, and I'm just so honored for Pastor Kevin and Pastor Debbie, because for, they, for, for their yes, we're here today. Come on, can we honor Pastor Kevin and Pastor Debbie? They said yes to the Lord in 1993. That's the same year I was born. I can't believe I'm almost 30, and Pastor Kevin's still 35. That's a miracle. Only God can do that. Oh, man. All right. Okay, I think we're ready to play. We're ready to play. Those of you that don't have it yet, y'all can still join as we start. All right, all right, y'all got it? All right, let's go. So this is how we're going to play, all right? We're going to give, we're going to put a couple questions, it's going to be like a poll, and you're going to vote. So two, one, here we go. If you're joining us online, you can also play your favorite vacation spots, all right? So would you like the city, you, you click red. If you like staying at home, maybe a pool, you can do yellow. If you like going to the beach blue, mountains green, definitely green all the time. Come on, somebody. All the time green. All right, all right. Okay, they're coming in. You got four seconds, four seconds. Okay, we got, we got, we got a lot of answers already. Let's see. Ooh, the beach. Come on, Miami people. The second most voted is mountains. Yes, there's no mountains in Florida. Definitely mountains. All right, next. Let's go. Let's go to the next one. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see where we're at. Toilet. Guys, this is very controversial. Over, under, there's like, I, I'm, I do marriage counseling all the time because of this, so. So, so, what do you vote? Come on. Okay, they're coming in. They're coming. I don't, you, you know me, I'm green. It doesn't matter. But my wife is like, no, it needs to go under, <laughs> you know. Over. Oh, over. Come on. Man, hey, can I, can I tell you a secret? Like, this is the smart service. This is the smart service. Don't, just don't tell the other service. <laughs> All right. And we got one more, but I want you to be very honest with us. Because this is something that my wife and I, we've been conflicting with. Who does my baby boy look the most like? Come on. Be honest with me. Let's settle this today. There's people like, no, he looks like you this weekend and then next weekend. I think she, he's starting to look like her. No, no, no. Let's settle this today. Okay, okay. I gave you 10 more seconds. You still have 10 more seconds. I know you have to think through it, pray about it. All right. All right, let's see. Let's see. Here it is. No hard feelings, my more. Yeah! 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 I love this service! <laughs> I love this service. So last night people voted her, but now, now we're tied. So 12-15, we got to untie this. But <laughs> thank you so much for playing with us. Come on, give it up for yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you those that joined online. It's incredible. And, and, and I love, let, let's vote now for my baby girl. No, no, we don't need to vote for her. She looks just like daddy too. And guess what? She's my favorite. And the best thing of it, her brother don't even care. He don't worry about it. <laughs> no, we love our kids. Like Rachel's five, Josiah's four, five, six months, sorry. I, I wish he was four. I got to get him into basketball soon. <laughs> but. Something about Josiah is that he's teetering. And he was like the perfect baby. Like he will eat at 10 o'clock and sleep all the way till 6. But now that he's teething, he gets fevers. He, he, he's getting cranky and grumpy. And, and there's a lot happening because he's like, ah, it hurts. He's biting on me, biting on his sister, biting on everything. And we went to the, his uh, last appointment. And I was like, doctor, like, what's, what's the matter with this kid? This kid was great, and now he's waking up every, every two hours, and he's in a lot of pain. And this is the explanation that the pediatrician gave us. And is that he's teething, and that pain 
is the mechanism that the body utilizes for him to start speaking. And that's why now he says, da-da, da-da. You get it? You get it? He says, da-da, na ma ma Da-da. And not only that, but that's the mechanism for him. Because all he does is drink milk. But now that he's teething, he just feels the necessity to bite. That's the mechanism that the body's utilizing for him to start introducing himself to solid food. And now he's going to be able to eat steak, barbecue, chicken, mofongo. Oh, y'all like that? Empanada, croquetas, come on. Sancocho. I mean, that's not solid, man. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what we want to talk today. That's what I, I feel that the Lord wants to share today for you. And the title of this message is Don't Stop Growing. Don't Stop Growing. And, and, and if we're honest, we all have something we need to grow in. We all have areas in our life where we need to grow. Because sometimes, haven't you felt like you're stuck in the middle? Like, there haven't been progress in your life in the next last week or months. Or you feel like you're just going in circles, going in circles, and nothing has changed at all. And that takes us to our first point today. And, and, and the first point is you cannot grow yourself if you do not know yourself. You cannot grow yourself if you don't know yourself. And something that I love in the Bible is King David, one of the greatest king of the Bible, one of the greatest mans of God. God, God, God said, God, God called him a man after his own heart. Like God was in heaven, he would say, like, that's my dog, that's my dude. He's a man close to my heart. He knows my things. There was a moment in his life where he felt stuck, where he felt like nothing was happening. And this is what he says in the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verse 23, 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path. Of everlasting life. We need to be honest with ourselves. But most importantly, we need to open our hearts to God. And I know it's been a, a rough year. It's been uh, a lot of stuff has happened. And, and maybe we feel that we're our worst critics. Maybe, maybe we understand, hey, I need to grow, but I don't know where. Maybe some need to grow relationally. In relationships, maybe some of us here today need to grow spiritually. Maybe some here in this room need to grow financially. I, I, I remember a young adult came to me like, man, I'm working a full-time job, uh, and I got a part-time, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. And Pastor Isaac, to be honest with you, I'm broke. I got no money. And I'm like, let me see, let me see how I can help you, man. I'll bring him in. And I'm like, what's your financial statement? Like, let's, let's go through. Let's, let, where are you bleeding money from? Let's see. Man, this kid was partying almost every day. I'm like, I think your problem is not a money problem. And I'm like, what's your plan? What's your budget? He's like, I don't know. And that's the problem. Many, many times we can't grow because we don't know. What's our next steps? Or we don't have a plan to grow in those areas in our life. But if we first don't recognize the problem, if we first don't come and say, God, I need your help. God, my life is a mess. God, I can't do this without you. There's no way we're going to overcome what we're going through. And that's why I believe we need to grow. You know why? Because our lives are the product of our choices. Come on, somebody. Our life is the product of our choices. If we choose poorly, our life will be poor. And, and I know there's some Hispanic people here that are like, bueno, yo soy así. I'm like that, okay? A mí nadie me cambia. Have you heard that before? No one changed me. I remember last time I said that to my mom. The last time I said it. 
Any Latina moms in the house? Any Caribbean moms? Woo. Hey, we have prayer right after this message. Please bring your chanclas with you. But guess what? Si a ti nada te cambia, if nothing changes you, your circumstances won't change either. Because that what grow is all about. You need to know yourself and say, God, I need, I, I need help in this area. I need to grow in this area. I need your help because I can't do it. I tried it on my own strength, but I messed it up. But you have the power. You have the authority. You have the provision. You have the tools. You have everything I need to overcome and grow in my journey with you. And that takes us to our next point. Growing can be painful, but it's needed. Growing can be painful, but it's needed. And I love David because David, again, he comes here and he says, God, this is Psalm 51.10. God, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. Does that sound like anyone here today? That's, that's kind of me. Genesis is a Hebrew word for beginnings. God, he's saying, start, make a new fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. Sometimes we need a fresh start. But we're like, Jesus, take the wheel. But then when it's Monday, it's like, Jesus, I was kidding. Give me the wheel. God, start a fresh, fresh start. Fresh, fresh, something new in the chaos of my life. You know what happens? Sometimes we do the same, 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 same thing, and we're expecting a different result. And that's what happened with David. He was doing some stuff, and he's like, man, I can't, I can't, I can't figure it out, God. Would you start something new, something fresh in me? You know, because when, when, you, when you look for the definition of grow, there's only one word to define it, and that is increase. And I'm like, Lord, wh why, why increase? And I'm like, I don't understand why increase, because there's so much things that can grow plants and this. Grow means increase, because when you decrease, he increases in your life. When you decrease, he increases. Come on, somebody. You understand what I'm trying to say today? We need to decrease and say, God, I surrender all to you. I surrender my family. I surrender my children. I surrender my household. I surrender my job. I surrender my career. I surrender my dreams, because you're the one that provides the growth. Any parents here in the room? Come on, parents. I'm new to this. And I was trying to read all the books and trying to, and my dad's like, Isaac, don't worry. The number one, the number one thing of being a parent, number one thing it's required to be a parent is not knowing what to do. And I'm like, oh, thanks, dad. That's encouraging. But it's true because we grow in the journey. We grow in the journey. And sometimes, listen to this, we expect too much of ourselves. Oftentimes we live frustrated, disappointed, angry, depressed, with panic attacks. In fact, many of us here are burned out because we, we put the weight on ourselves of so many things we can't even give. And then a pandemic kicks in. And it's not COVID-19 or monkey pops. It's comparison. And we want to be cool like those kids in TikTok. Come on, youth. We want to be cool like the people on Instagram. Don't worry, I'll come for y'all. I'm coming for y'all. But we see our, our co-workers on vacation on Facebook. And then we see someone posting something on Twitter. And then we start comparing ourselves, and I'm like, God, I want that. God, I want that. God, I want that. God, why, why don't I have that? Why didn't I think, hey, can I, can I encourage you something? Like, my, one of my dreams, listen to this. My dream was to have a Tesla. Man, I was like, man, Tesla. Like, and hey, this, has this happened to anyone? Like, have you had, like, those Jesus moments? Like, you're in the middle, like, uh, of, the, of the library or something or, or, or Publix, and, and you have these Jesus moments, like a light comes from heaven. Wee! 
And I just felt like, like the Lord speaking, like, bro, you can't even charge your, your phone and your watch. What makes you think you're going to charge your car? No, and it's true. Sometimes we, we expect of ourselves more than we can give, more than we have. But can I, can I encourage someone today? God won't always give you what you want. That's the bad news. He won't always give you what you want, but he will always provide what you need. Come on. He will always provide what you need. And we need to go into that. God, I'm going to be content with what I have, with what I need, because you are enough. I am enough. Come on. Can someone say amen? Yeah, come on, that was good. Say it one more time. Amen. Amen. Love it. Come on, give it up for yourselves. Woo. And that's what he promised. Even in the book of Philippians chapter 418, he says, my God will meet all my needs. Not what I want. All my needs according to his riches and glory. Another version says, you can be sure. Man, you can lock that. God would always provide what we need. But it's hard to trust in God. It's so hard to trust in God, but can I tell you something? It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. My baby girl, Rachel, I I love her so much. But she got this, like, sassiness. I'm praying for her because she's like, phew. This day I was, I, was, I was trying to shop for something, a hard drive, and, and I'm just, you know when you, you can't find something somewhere, you're like going to another shop and another shop, especially here in Miami. Sometimes there's something that I want, and I see the line, I'm like, nah, I don't want it anymore. So I'm just shopping around, and she, she always wants something, and I'm very, like, focused. When I want something, I know where it's at, what aisle, I just go grab it and pay for it. No, my wife, she wants to have, like, a prayer meeting at Target. She's like, oh, walking around the aisles and all that. Like, what's up? Girl, what's up? You, you got what you need? No, I'm just looking. <laughs> really? We don't have that here, right? Amen? No, no ladies like that? Just my wife. She's, she's extra. She can take an hour, two hours. I'm like, girl, like, like this is what I need. Pump, pump, pump. Let's go. And, and my baby girl, Rachel, she always finds something. Daddy, look at this. Can I buy this? I'm like, girl, you got like 20 dolls at home. You want one more? What you trying to build? A youth ministry of, of Barbies? And, and, and I'm like, not now, Rachel. Let's go to the next store. And, and, and we go to the next store. And Rachel, Daddy, look, I got this. I'm like, no, no, not now. Not now, not now, Rachel. Next time. Next store. And let's go, and let's go, let's go. Well, we get to five below. Y'all know where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> we get to five below. And she finds this teddy bear. She's like, Daddy, this is the best teddy bear in the world. Can I have it? And I'm just trying to pay, and I'm just, and I'm like, Rachel, no, not now, mama. And like something shook in in five below. All of a sudden, Rachel changed her face. And in the middle of the store, like everybody looking, she's like, you never buy me anything. Man, any, is it just me or anyone, any other parent here has like professional actors? <laughs> hey, if you're joining us online, you got professional actor kids, put it on the chat. Like put professional actors because my baby girl, she's just five and she's just this professional actor. You never buy me anything. You never have money, which is true, but not all the time, you know. You never have anything. And like everybody's looking at me like, mm, giving me that shame and guilt look. Mm, this is a terrible parent. But guess what? She still didn't get that teddy bear. <laughs> and guess what? Many times we're the same with God. God, we want this. God, we want this. God, we want this. God, we want this. And God is just saying, are you ready for it? Are you prepared for it? Have you grown out of this to grow into this? Come on, somebody. Do you understand what I'm preaching today? Like, you need to know that we need to grow before God brings the blessing. Come on. And that takes us to our next point. If you stop growing, when you stop growing, you start dying. When you stop growing, 
you stop dying. You start dying. And, and, and it's, it's incredible because many times we understand that growth brings pain. But we're never going to. We're never going to grow strong muscles if we don't pick up the weights. We're never going to have faith, a stronger faith, or grow into a stronger faith if we do not face resistance. See, and this, and this is the problem. Many times we think that God is mad as a, at us, that he doesn't want us. And can I share something with you in the book of Jeremiah? And Jeremiah was a cool character. Jeremiah was the weeping pastor. The complaining pastor. He had every single little bit of complaining in his life. He will complain about everything. And when I mean everything, is everything. If the air was too cold in the church, he would be, oh, it's too freezing in the church. If the... Lady in the bakery, look, no me dio el guayabi queso bien. Ah, she didn't give me the guayabi queso bien. He will complain about everything. And this is what the Lord told Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Come on, somebody. Maybe you walked into this room and you said, man, I'm going through it, Pastor Isaac. I think God wants to kill me. It's not to kill you, baby. It's not to harm you. It's to give you a purpose. It's to give you a future. It's to, come on. You're, you're, oh, my God. Am I preaching to somebody? It's to give you hope. He sees your future. What you're going through right now is a momentary, temporary trouble, but it will take you to your future, to your purpose, to your calling, to the exceedingly and abundant that God has for you. Come on. Can someone say amen? amen? Yeah, man, this service is routed. Love it. And with this, I'm not saying to ignore your emotions, to, ah, oh, just suck it up. No. But many times we ignore our emotions, and you know what happens? We forget who we are. And we become the person that we never were. And we become a fake version of ourselves. And God cannot bless the fake you. He can only bless the real you. And, and that's something so, so important when it comes to growth. And this is what Peter Cazero says, one of my favorite authors. He says, ignoring our emotion is turning our back on reality. But listening to our emotion ushers us into reality. And reality is where we meet God. We need to come to a place where we're real with God. And real with ourselves. And that takes us to our last point today. Only planted things grow. Only planted things grow. And you're probably looking at me like, hey, what, what does that mean, planted things grow? Well, I'll tell you a little bit of it. We need to be planted on the rock that's Jesus Christ. Anything else is sinking sand. We need to be planted, rooted in Jesus. We need to be planted in his word. We need to be rooted in his promise. Then when the world says you're not capable, you're not enough, you could go to the word and say, thy God says that through him all things are possible. Come on. Then when you get that doctor report, when you get that negative test, you can say, God, I know that in you, you're my healer, you're my comfort, you're my provider. Come on, somebody. We need to be rooted in the word of God. But we also need to be rooted in a church community. Man, can I tell you, sometimes people ask me like, yo, come here, Pastor. Come here. What's the secret sauce? I'm like, what's, what's, what's secret sauce? What are you talking about? Man, you're always energy and positive. Like, what's the secret sauce? And I'll just tell you, you want, you want to know what the secret sauce is? Oh, well, it's just two people, I'll text it to y'all. Y'all want to know what the secret sauce is? This is the secret sauce, guys. Pastor Isaac's not always happy. I confess it. 
But when I walk through those doors and I see students like Becca that a few months ago was going through a hard health crisis. And she was in her room and she couldn't come to service, but she watched online and God did the miraculous. I'm saying, God, you're still working. When there's students like Josh that were super shy, always in the tech booth, hiding their talents from God. And then they were pushed forward and seeing them lead worship in the youth. But not only in the youth, but also in the main. I'm like, God is still working. When I see the Paris family, Angie and Jeremy, that they come. They, they found us through a Facebook, Instagram post. And they came. And not only did they came, they keep coming. And they brought their parents. They brought their sister. And now there are like 50 of them all over this room. I don't know. Man, I see God is still here. God is still coming. We are growing. When I see Sophia that came from a deep depression from, from COVID, came to, to Jesus, came to our youth group plugged in she was going through a tremendous crisis but God restored her restored her family I see God is still working when I see students like Samantha that work relentless to go to the youth she will come to church hide in the restroom all day until service ended and then come out is now one of our small group leaders for the middle school girl I'm like God is still working God is still we need to grow when we're planted we need to see people experiencing life we need a hug man and the most important thing, and I got stories, I got like a hundred stories, but Pastor Kevin would not allow that. But anyway, no, just kidding. I just don't have the time. But I have hundreds and hundreds of stories. But the most important thing and the most important miracle in my life is that they don't know how much they made me grow. They don't, and they don't understand how much, when I, when I feel down, when I feel like God is far away, when I feel that I'm stuck, that I'm not growing, I come into the youth and I see our youth encouraging, leading the way and saying, Pastor, we got this. Pastor, you push us. Now we push you. This is why a community like this is so important. Guess what? If your life is a mess, if you don't have it all figured out together, you're in the perfect room. You're in the perfect place. You know why? Because you are in the house of God. And in the house of God, there's miracles. There's hope. There's life. There's a community. Come on. Get some of Clap your hands and make some noise for Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We are here. You are our God. You are faithful. You will never abandon us. You will never forsake us. Come on, people, that we worship God today. And I just want to end with these four things quick. Because maybe you've been here 20 15 years or maybe this is your first time and you don't even know anything about God, the Bible, church or you haven't been in church for a long time but can I encourage you today if you're in this place it's because God loves you loves you, and he wants to meet you in this room there's nothing impossible for her there's no sin bigger than our God there's nothing wrong or good that you can do to earn his love. He just wants to give it freely. So four points, and I'm ending with this today. What's the most important thing you need to grow out of? Maybe a toxic relationship. This is your next step, Pastor. I got like 50 things. So yo, yo no hice por donde empezar. No, no, no. Let's talk with one at a time. Right now, what's the most important thing you need to grow? Maybe a toxic relationship. Maybe a bad habit. Maybe something that's hurting your family. Second, what's the most important thing you need to grow into? What's God calling you into? But you're afraid. What's God calling you to grow into? But it's painful, God. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to think about me. Another one is choose people. That will help you grow. Come on, you know, you know those friends that are bringing you down. Like, come on, choose people that will help you grow. And finally, and most importantly, grow in your relationship with Jesus. This is not about religion, this is about relationship. Man, and my honest is like the most honest prayers I've had with God. 
have started like this. God, life sucks. No, I'm, I'm being real. Ah, your word says this, but I see something else. And therefore, he needs me. When I say, God, I messed up, but I need you. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better pastor. I want to be, I want to be like you, Jesus. I want to grow. And I just feel that this house is growing. Our kids, our youth, our young adults, we're growing. Our family are growing. God is, God is the one that provides the growth. We're not stuck. We're not stuck. It, it feels like, hey, there hasn't been improvement. But if God were to rewind the video, you aren't where you used to be. Come on, somebody. So every time you remember this, remember that he's the God of the mountain, but he's the God of the valleys too. So when you're in a bad season, remember that he is faithful and that he can do it again. But probably you're living the dream. You're, uh, Pastor Isaac, I'm, I'm living the best life ever. Well, don't forget where he brought you from. And be grateful. So I want everyone to bow your heads and close your eyes at this moment. Come, Holy Spirit. God, we need you in order to grow. Direct our life in your trajectory, God. Holy Spirit, we just need you. We need your guidance, God. Help us fix our eyes on you at all times. Help us grow out of some things that you know and we know we need to grow out, but help us grow into those things that you have planned for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If there's someone here today that has never given their life to Jesus, or maybe they did once and they, they drift away, drift away, or I want to I want to extend this invitation before I end today. So if you're in this room and you're like, wow, I need that fresh start. I need that that you're talking about. It's right here and it's available for you. So repeat this, this prayer with me, would you? Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Change my life. I've tried it all. And it's been a mess. But I trust in you. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for the new life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Pastor Kevin has a few more steps. <laughs>